We're here. It happened. It finally happened. James Harden is going to the Nets. They made a blockbuster deal to acquire one of the NBA's most prolific scorers. The beard himself, James Harden. Durant, Harden, Kyrie, all on one team. These are three of the greatest shot creators and shot makers yep. we've ever seen on one floor together. Could that Nets team win the championship? Oh, yeah. It's probably the greatest trio ever of just pure offensive genius. I want to get to the Brooklyn Nets, who are an utter failure. I actually hope Kyrie Irving gets cut. I mean, this, this, this is a disgrace. You cannot post that. Why not? Everybody posts everything else. I know the, the rant got hit on the knee. James Harden wants a trade to the 76ers today, I'm told. Kyrie has requested a trade. Kevin Durant is a Phoenix Sun. Super teams. They've always existed in NBA history. In the distant 1980s, there were the Los Angeles Lakers and Boston Celtics who ran the league with an iron fist. In the 90s, it was MJ's Chicago Bulls that dominated, winning six rings and six tries. In the early 2000s, Kobe and Shaq three-peated, while the San Antonio Spurs Big Three collected a handful of rings. In the 2010s, it was none other than the Golden State Warriors and Miami Heat who reigned supreme as two of the most talented squads ever assembled in basketball. The super teams that people reminisce about most are the ones that succeeded. But what about the ones that failed? Before 2021, discussions about failed super teams were always bland. Each team that would be brought up would always have one common denominator, and that's that the main superstars they acquired were all out of their primes. For years, there wasn't a consensus top team that took the cake as the true number one most disappointing super team until today. Now, one squad stands alone as the biggest failure of any super team in NBA history, the Brooklyn Nets. Their big three was composed of three borderline superstar level talents, all in the primes of their career. Kevin Durant, James Harden, and Kyrie Irving were a trio of Hall of Famers, each with an illustrious resume to their name. The thought of those three on the same squad with one another sent shivers down opposing team spines. They weren't just expected to win one championship, no, they were expected to form a dynasty Yet, just a year and a half after forming, the Nets' big three deteriorated in one of the most confusing and unlucky fashions imaginable. Nothing is guaranteed in sports, and the Brooklyn Nets found that out the hard way. But how are they even in a position to build this big three to begin with? Well, it all started with the worst trade in NBA history. In the summer of 2016, the Brooklyn Nets found themselves in the lowest position a franchise could possibly be in. They were a bottom five team in the NBA and had zero first round picks to go along with it. Three years prior, they had traded four first round picks for Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, and Jason Terry, three veterans with championship experience who were aging and way out of their primes. It was an attempt to build a super team and it failed miserably. One playoff series victory is all the Nets could muster following this trade. Their team was old and lethargic, being stomped on by both the Miami Heat and Atlanta Hawks in 2014 and 2015. Following these L's, the Nets declined into the worst team in the league, winning 21 games in 2015-16 and 20 games in 2016-17. Instead of being rewarded for their suffering with high draft picks, they had to watch in horror as the Boston Celtics feasted on their mistake. That Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett trade ended up landing the C's the third pick in 2016 and the first pick in 2017. Boston selected both Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum with these picks, adding two franchise cornerstones for essentially nothing. The Nets were quite possibly in the most nightmarish position any team had ever been in in NBA history, 
So how did they escape this horrible situation? Once Sean Marks was hired as their new general manager in February of 2016, things began changing fast. Sean Marks expertly traded and signed for players who would evolve into key pieces for the Nets. Popular names of today like Karis LeVert, Spencer Dinwiddie, and D'Angelo Russell were all acquired for pennies on the dollar. The 2017-18 season was when Brooklyn really started to turn the corner. They may have only won 28 games, but a culture was starting to be built. Players like Joe Harris, Jared Allen, and Rondé Hollis Jefferson were exciting prospects that had arrived out of thin air. At this point, the Nets had a chip on their shoulder, and were eager to show the league that they weren't some tanking mess to overlook. Once the 2018-19 season arrived, the Nets progressed into one of the most exciting young teams in the league. They smashed expectations, winning 42 games and earning a playoff appearance as the sixth seed. They were led by an all-star in D'Angelo Russell, with countless ascending pieces alongside him. The Nets often went viral on social media for having the time of their life on the court. Brooklyn's bench was notoriously giddy with excitement after every Nets field goal, dancing around like it was a party, and it was. Each Brooklyn Nets game in the 2018-19 season was a sight to see. This was a franchise that had been resurrected from the grave they had previously dug themselves into. Their culture had been revamped into one that was represented by hard work and toughness. This squad may have lost in round one, but they gave Nets fans a rare feeling they had lacked for so long. Optimism. That vaunted Brooklyn culture that had been developed didn't just catch the eye of Nets fans though. The top stars in the league had become well aware of Brooklyn's rise, and they wanted a piece of the pie. Once the summer of 2019 arrived, Kevin Durant, arguably the best player in the world, was intrigued by the Nets. They were an attractive destination, and it was all thanks to the great job Brooklyn's management had done in rebuilding. On the afternoon of June 30th, 2019, staggering headlines were revealed to the NBA world. Kevin Durant had signed with the Nets and brought along his friends Kyrie Irving and DeAndre Jordan. Shocking news, and this sent Brooklyn into a frenzy. They replaced D'Angelo Russell with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, adding two stars to an already stacked core. The Brooklyn Nets had done it. They had saved themselves from the claws of purgatory, avenging themselves from their poor Celtics trade of the past. However, these incredible signings did come with some risk. Kyrie Irving was a questionable locker room figure. In 2017, he had forced himself out of Cleveland because he didn't want to be the second option to LeBron James. Once he was traded to Boston, his tenure with the Celtics was anything but fun. The team imploded in the 2018-19 season. They fell well below their championship expectations and got crushed in round two by the Milwaukee Bucks. Kyrie failed to step up as the leader the Seas desperately desired and left Boston being the despised figure. On the flip side, KD was undergoing recovery for an Achilles injury he suffered during the 2019 finals. This Achilles tear was seen as a death sentence for Durant, and there were many concerns that he never returned to the same player he was before this injury. But the frightening risks were worth the possible reward. Kyrie and KD on the same team with an elite bench? Who could possibly stop that? NBA fans had no answers to this question, and anxiously observed the Nets with a watchful eye. For now, the 2019-20 season was in the hands of Kyrie Irving as the number one option, and it was less than stellar. The Nets went 35-37, and 37, earning the 7th seed, with Kyrie only playing 20 games out of 72. Irving made the headlines throughout the season with his odd quotes. After a January 2020 loss to the Sixers, Irving claimed the team needed one or two more pieces to complement him and his teammates. It's pretty glaring that we need you know, one more piece or two more pieces that will complement myself, KD, DJ, GT, Spence, Karras, and you know, we'll see how that evolves. It's extremely rare for a star player to flat out admit to the public that his team needed more. This quote raised many eyebrows, with most believing it was unfair for Irving to critique his team when the best player, KD, wasn't even playing. 
Kyrie's relationship with the Nets management, particularly the owner Joe Tsai and the executive Sean Marks, was a key factor throughout his time as a Net. Quotes like these surely didn't help strengthen that bond. Brooklyn was far less exciting than their past 2018-19 campaign, ending their season with a sweep to the Toronto Raptors in the bubble. Nobody thought much of this L. The Nets were shorthanded, missing Kyrie, KD, and a boatload of rotation pieces due to various injuries. The most important moment from this season didn't come in this round one exit. Rather, it came on March 7, 2020. Kenny Atkinson, the Nets head coach for four years, was surprisingly canned one month before the playoffs were set to tip off. Brooklyn was the seventh seed at the time, and firing their head coach so suddenly sent shockwaves through the basketball world. So why did the Nets choose to part ways? Throughout the 2019-20 season, there were grumblings that both Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving weren't thrilled with Atkinson's coaching style. There was frustration among the Nets players regarding how the rotations were constructed, more specifically involving Jared Allen starting over DeAndre Jordan. When Kyrie and KD signed with Brooklyn back in the summer of 2019, DeAndre had joined them, and the two stars didn't like the idea of their good friend coming off the bench. Durant was also reportedly underwhelmed by the Nets' play, and told Atkinson in a team meeting that they were not building the proper culture traits necessary for a title contender. Once Atkinson was fired and replaced by interim head coach Jock Vaughn, one of the first decisions Vaughn made was to start DeAndre Jordan. DeAndre may have been a worse player than Allen, but the Nets wanted to keep Kyrie and KD satisfied. On September 3, 2020, Steve Nash was hired as the Nets' new head coach. Fast forward to October of 2020, and Kyrie Irving was heard on a podcast denying the allegations that he got Kenny fired. Irving said that Atkinson was great with the Nets back in 2018, but he wanted a head coach who would understand that he was a human being first. When asked about the Nash hiring, Kyrie said the team didn't really need a head coach. He claimed that he and KD could be the head coach, and that it was a collaborative effort. Kenny was great for the group that he served, and I was very appreciative of, of what he was giving us throughout the season when we were playing. We always heard how great Nash was or saw how great Nash was as a player, but also when you get to know him as a person, you understand why he can coexist with us because we don't need somebody to come in and put their coaching philosophy on everything that we're doing and change up the wheel and, yo, you guys need to start doing this. And we start running on the first day of practice. It's just like, no, <laughs> I need somebody that's going to understand that I am a human being first. Kyrie specifically mentioning Atkinson making the players run during practice speaks for itself. He didn't like how Kenny was coaching them and wanted someone who would let the players have a say. Steve Nash did just that. This event and how the Nets reacted to it set a dangerous precedent for the franchise. They had officially established that they were willing to do whatever was needed to keep Kyrie and KD happy. Atkinson was a key reason why the Nets had built such an incredible culture to begin with. And now, he was gone in the blink of an eye. But once the flames died down, there was little worry in the city of Brooklyn. Kyrie and KD were finally healthy in December of 2020. Overwhelming hype was building in Brooklyn, and it was time for the 7-Eleven duo to take over New York. The first two games of the Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant era in Brooklyn went flawlessly. The Nets destroyed both the Golden State Warriors and Boston Celtics to open up the season 2-0. Kevin Durant, despite suffering the most brutal injury in sports, looked just as dominant as he was in the past. Kyrie was unstoppable, nailing 17 threes in the first two games. Things were rolling in Nets world, but then the first domino fell. There's many factors to blame for why the KD Kyrie era failed, but one event that is barely mentioned is the Spencer Dinwiddie ACL tear. Dinwiddie, the longtime net since 2016, suffered a partially torn ACL in the third game of the season against Charlotte. This one injury sent the Nets into a panic. Perhaps their most important piece outside of Kyrie and KD was done for the season and this forced them to start searching for help. Luckily for Brooklyn, help was available, but it wouldn't be cheap. 
1,700 miles away in the great state of Texas, Houston Rockets superstar James Harden won it out. The Nets already had a great team constructed on paper, but the idea of the beer joining the fray was incredibly tempting. The question was not if Brooklyn was able to do it. They had the assets to pull off a deal. Rather, the question was if they should do it. While they contemplated this decision, other questionable news started growing from another place on the team. From January 7th, 2021 to January 18th, 2021, Kyrie Irving was absent from the team. It was reported that he was taking a mental health day. On January 12th, he was seen at his sister's birthday party without a mask on, which violated the NBA's health and safety protocols. He ended up missing seven straight games due to personal reasons, which was the Nets' breaking point. They glanced at their injury list, which showed Spencer Dinwiddie, an integral piece that was out indefinitely. Then they glanced at Kyrie and his history of antics. They didn't just want Harden, they needed him. Not only was he a former MVP that would make the Nets a super team, but he was also Kyrie insurance, in case Irving was to miss any more time in the future. On January 13th, 2021, a bombshell headline was released to the public. The beard was in Brooklyn, and the greatest big three in NBA history had just been established. The Nets gave up Jared Allen, Karis LeVert, and every first round pick until 2027 in this deal. In other news that went down on this day, Kyrie Irving, who was still gone from the team with little explanation, was seen on a politician's Zoom call. Finally, on January 20th, 2021, Irving returned to the team, apologizing for his absence, claiming he had some family and personal issues to deal with. It was understandable enough, most Nets fans just shrugged their shoulders. The real topic of conversation was James Harden. He was now paired with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. Harden was a one-time MVP who was coming off of three straight scoring title awards. Unfortunately, this scoring led to little winning in Houston. Harden had made quite the ugly exit from the Rockets. He was out of shape and had criticized many of his teammates and the roster construction on the way out. Kyrie and KD may have had their championships, but Harden did not. It was the last thing he needed to complete his career. This squad had the potential to be the most deadly team in NBA history. They were the overwhelming favorites to win the championship. All they had to do was play, and the results would take care of themselves. Sounds simple enough, right? The Brooklyn Nets were 7-6 when they acquired James Harden. By the end of the season, they were 48-24. Harden quickly proved his worth, evolving into an MVP candidate. The Beard had primarily played the shooting guard position throughout his career, with a scoring first mentality. In Brooklyn, that changed. Kyrie told Harden upon his arrival that you're the point guard, and I'm gonna play the shooting guard. James agreed, and switched from a primary scorer to a primary playmaker. The big three didn't play much together though due to various injuries, but when those three stars were on the floor together, the result was otherworldly. A prime example of their dominance came in a February 2021 game against the LA Clippers. Facing a Kawhi Leonard and Paul George-led defense, the big three combined for 29 points on 75% field goal shooting in the fourth quarter to get the win. The jokes were over, reality was here. All 29 other teams watched this performance in complete terror. There was nobody that could stop the big three Brooklyn Nets when they were on the court. But then, the injuries began piling up. Kevin Durant and James Harden both dealt with hamstring issues that shortened the regular season. KD and Harden played just 35 and 36 games out of 72, while Kyrie played 54. The acclaimed super team hadn't gotten off to the fairy tale start that fans had hoped for, but there was little fear in Brooklyn. As long as they were healthy by the postseason, nothing else mattered. The most shocking moment involving this net squad didn't come from anyone in the big three. Rather, it came from the regular season free agent signings. In March of 2021, Brooklyn signed both Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge off the buyout market. Despite these two being role players who were out of their primes, the NBA world was sent into an uproar. NBA fans on social media screamed, saying how much help does Brooklyn need? All Nets fans could do was smugly laugh and shrug their shoulders. Everything was lining up perfectly for a championship. 
Aldridge may have retired a few weeks after signing with the team due to heart conditions, but Brooklyn was still stacked. A testament to how elite the Nets were was that despite these injuries, by the end of the season, they still sat comfortably at the second seed. Come playoff time, they faced the battered and bruised Boston Celtics in round one. They crushed them. Get him going a little bit. Yeah. On a cut to the basket. Harden throws it down. Irving against Fournier. Well defended. Irving gets by him and plays it in. Any possible concerns, doubts, or questions about the Nets' big three were evaporated in this five-game beatdown. Brooklyn works Boston like a part-time job, annihilating the Celtics and winning the series 4-1. The greatest moment that the Nets' big three ever had came in game four of this series in TD Garden. In this game, Brooklyn's big three combined for an incomprehensible 104 points total. Three players, 104 points. Harden was incredible, Kyrie was masterful, and Durant was a wizard. Yeah, the Celtics may have been missing key pieces like Rob Williams and Jalen Brown, but nobody cared. The Nets had just dropped 141 points on the Celtics' dome. After the game, as the cherry on top, Kyrie Irving stomped on the Celtics logo. He had been mercilessly booed throughout this series by angry Celtics fans, and he had beaten them. The championship story was aligning perfectly. Kyrie would win a ring and get his revenge against all his doubters. James Harden would finally grab his desperately coveted championship that had haunted him for so long. Kevin Durant would prove to his haters that he could lead a team to the promised land without Steph Curry. For just a moment following the Nets closing out Boston in Game 5 at home, everything was perfect. The dream was well on its way to becoming a reality. This was it, Brooklyn. Now was the greatest chance they had to win a championship in their franchise's history. If only it could have ended this way. Winning a championship in the NBA doesn't just take skill. It doesn't just take perfect roster construction and elite star power, it also takes luck. From this point onwards, Brooklyn would deteriorate into the most unlucky team in the NBA. And it all started just a few seconds into Game 1 against the Milwaukee Bucks in Round 2. James Harden had re-injured his hamstring. On the first offensive play of the game, Harden made a routine drive to the paint only to come up hobbling. Nobody knew it at the time, but this play was the beginning of the end to the Nets super team. As Harden slowly exited the arena, the unbreakable confidence that the Nets had was shaken. This injury would officially mark the end of James Harden's elite play as a Net. From January 2021 to June of 2021, Harden played like an incredible MVP candidate for the Nets. Following this injury, he would never again reach the superstar level in Brooklyn. It's easy to say that this injury was the sole reason for why Harden was never the same as Annette, but that would be ignoring what occurred after this. The blame for Harden's decline lies squarely on the shoulders of the Brooklyn Nets organization. They mishandled this hamstring strain to the absolute worst degree imaginable. Spins got ripped by Harden. You Look saw the that. fact that he had no burst. He couldn't get away. That usually is a transition layup. But we'll get back to this shortly. An injury like this was already a tough pill for the Nets to swallow, but still, they prevailed. The Kyrie and KD duo held this ship together, destroying the Bucks in both games one and two. Game two, more specifically, was pure destruction. The Nets without Harden beat the Bucks by nearly 40 points. Kyrie and KD combined for 54 points, trouncing the Bucks and restoring confidence in Brooklyn. As long as these two were healthy, hopes were still high. Game 3 against Milwaukee was a chance for the Nets to send the Bucks to the grave. But something else more shocking happened. The Nets played poorly. That's right, the unbeatable freight train finally came back down to earth. Kyrie and KD both shot poorly while Giannis and Chris Middleton had incredible performances. Still, this game was extremely winnable. The Nets even took a three-point lead with a minute and 23 seconds left in the fourth. This could have been their ticket to the Eastern Conference Finals. All they had to do was play defense. Unfortunately, 
the Nets had a breakdown. They lost their lead and let Bruce Brown take two key shots that were bricks in the final 20 seconds. A horrible ending, and Steve Nash deserves the blame for such incompetence. The Nets had two of the most clutch players in the game on the floor in both Kyrie and KD, but opted for a role player to take the two most important shots. Down by three with two seconds left. All the Nets could muster was a difficult shot by KD that bricked off the back of the rim. Had the Nets won this game and gone up 3-0, the series would have been over. Instead, the Bucks were right back in it. Still, the Nets remained favored to advance. Once Game 4 rolled around though, that all changed. Brooklyn was trailing by 6 in the second quarter when yet another devastating injury hit them. This time, it was Kyrie Irving who was down. He landed awkwardly on Giannis Antetokounmpo's leg jumping up for a layup. That meant that both Kyrie and Harden were now sidelined, leaving Kevin Durant all by himself as the lone star. The tables had now turned. Brooklyn went from the favorites to win this series to the underdogs. Just a few weeks ago, everything looked perfect for the Nets. Now, their worst nightmare was being realized. They lost game four, and the series was tied at two. But help was on the way, and it would come in the form of a hobbled James Harden. Many thought the beard was done for, that his hamstring injury would prevent him from playing any remaining games in this series. Instead, it was announced that Harden would be returning in game five, which would go down as the absolute worst decision that he ever made in his career. The beard had a grade two hamstring strain, an injury that took four to eight weeks to heal saw Harden make his return to playing in only 10 days. It was a completely nonsensical, dangerous decision to come back this quickly, but Harden couldn't care less. Throughout his 12-year career thus far, his chances at a ring were denied over and over again in heartbreaking fashion. This may have been his best chance, and he wasn't going to sit on the sideline. Brooklyn's doctors had ruled this initial injury as hamstring tightness, which was false. It was actually a grade 2 strain. The Nets had incorrectly hidden the true details of Harden's injury to the public. Under no circumstances should he have been allowed to play, but Brooklyn's desire to get a ring triumphed over any morals. Harden played 45, 40, and 53 minutes in games 5, 6, and 7 of this series on a crippled hamstring. This deteriorated his lower body, and could have permanently altered his quickness and speed that made him so good to begin with. Regardless, the beard was back on the floor with KD, and these two left it all on the court in an attempt to save their season. Kevin Durant played every single minute of Game 5, scoring a 49-point triple-double to just barely beat the Bucks. Brooklyn had taken a 3-2 lead thanks to KD and his unreal offensive talent, but this would be the last W the Nets would get. They lost both Game 6 and 7 to drop the series. In Game 7, KD gave it his all, scoring 48 points. With just six seconds left in regulation, with Brooklyn down by two, Durant turned and hit an impossible three-pointer that gave the Nets the lead. Only one thing, upon second glance, it was a two. Durant's foot was just barely on the line. A back-breaking, unlucky result, and Durant's reaction to this told the whole story. By this point, KD and the rest of his teammates were exhausted. No end was more fitting than the final shot of the game in overtime. Durant iso drew Holiday with his squad down by two and airballed the jumper. He was simply out of energy. The Nets had a timeout and decided not to use it. It's clear that a minute of rest was much needed for Durant and that a proper play should have been drawn up. Instead, Steve Nash did nothing, allowing the tumultuous 2020-21 season for the Nets to end in agony. So much went wrong for Brooklyn to lose. What if Kyrie and Harden never got hurt? What if Joe Harris shot better than 34% from the field and 32% from three against Milwaukee? What if Katie's foot was behind the line? The worst part is that we'll never have closure because this was the last playoff series the Nets big three ever played together. Brooklyn would be back, shouted the world. It was a fair thing to say at the time. Barring injury, there was no reason why the Nets wouldn't be right back as a top team in the league. 
KD confirmed this by signing a four-year max extension in August of 2021. The superstar was all in, and trusted Kyrie and Harden would soon sign contracts to remain as well. But this is where the story starts to shift. The Nets went from being poisoned by injuries to being poisoned by decisions. It's a choice that very well may have cost the Nets a championship, a choice to not get a shot. Before the 2021-22 season kicked off, New York created a mandate that wouldn't allow unvaccinated athletes to play games. Of course, the Brooklyn Nets were affected by this, meaning that an unvaccinated Nets player would not be allowed to play any home games for their team. On October 14th, 2021, Kyrie Irving confirmed that he was unvaccinated and boldly claimed that he would not be receiving the shot. Immediately, Brooklyn banned Kyrie from team activities until he was eligible to be a full participant. Remember, Kyrie wasn't allowed to play in home games, but he was allowed to play road games. The Nets could have let him play for them on the road, but took a firm stance against this. How did Irving's two all-star teammates feel about this? Their answers varied. Kevin Durant said he wasn't going to force Kyrie to get the vaccine. He was indifferent to the situation and was nonchalant with whichever decision Irving made. On the other hand, James Harden saw all of this unfold and felt infuriated. He wanted Kyrie to get vaccinated, even joking that he was going to give him the shot. Reminder, KD and Kyrie already had their respective championship rings. James Harden had none and joined the Nets to win one. Seeing one of his teammates outright throw away the season for a shot and seeing the other one okay with it made Harden enraged. He was getting older and needed to compete. He didn't have time for these antics. Kyrie wasn't going to change his mind though, and ended up missing 65% of the season because he wasn't allowed to play. In other news, Kevin Durant wasn't too happy with the beard. When training camp came around, James Harden arrived out of shape. Harden's lack of conditioning reportedly astonished Durant, and KD confronted him about this. But why was Harden out of shape to begin the season? The easy answer to this would be to call him lazy. But in reality, the reasoning for Harden being out of shape goes all the way back to the 2021 playoffs. Harden returned in 10 days from an injury that takes 4 to 8 weeks to heal. Harden playing 45, 40, and 53 minutes in 3 straight games on a grade 2 hamstring strain ruined his athleticism and didn't allow for a proper recovery from his initial grade 2 hamstring injury. Harden couldn't do cardio during the offseason because his hamstring wasn't fully healed. As a result, he gained weight and showed up to training camp out of shape. Brooklyn's management and doctors were at fault for this, but Harden took all of the blame from the NBA media. Either way, the 2021-22 season was already a disaster for the Nets. One star was Kevin Durant, the other star was out of shape, and the third star wasn't playing games. Even Joe Harris had his season ended just 14 games in because of an injured left ankle. Despite all of this though, by New Year's of 2022, the Nets still held the number one seed in the East. James Harden and Kevin Durant had steered the ship well without Kyrie. Even better news came in mid-December of 2021. The Nets had given in. They were allowing Kyrie to play road games. At long last, everything was finally coming together for Brooklyn. They had the best record in the East. Kevin Durant was still a superstar. James Harden was getting back into all-star shape. And Kyrie was making his return. Sure, it wasn't a perfect story but the Nets still had as good of a chance as any team in the league to win a ring. This hype was amplified on January 12th, 2022 against the Chicago Bulls. The second-seeded Nets with a fully healthy trio played the first-seeded Bulls on national television and absolutely crushed them. It was a stark reminder of how incredible this big three could be when on the floor together, but this would be the last game that Kyrie, KD, and Harden would ever play together. Just three days later, at a home game against the Pelicans, Durant sprained his MCL in a freak injury. This was the final nail in the coffin. The floodgates were now opened. From this point on, it was the Kyrie and Harden show, and it was a disaster. The Nets started dropping games, ultimately racking up 11 straight losses. Kyrie continued missing time due to the mandate, and Harden's play declined. As you can imagine, the Beard was quite unhappy at what had occurred during his Nets tenure thus far. 
He came here to hoop with Kyrie and KD, and he had barely gotten that experience. On top of this, Harden's left hamstring was giving him issues. His right hamstring that had been injured back in the 2021 playoffs was healed, but now his left hammy was bothering him. He was forced to be the number one option on Brooklyn with Kyrie missing home games, putting even more wear and tear on his legs. Soon enough, he was fed up and began giving visibly less effort on the court. Murmurs about the beard wanting to go to Philadelphia began rising. The Nets denied it at first, but eventually, the truth revealed itself. James Harden wanted to be a Sixer. He wanted to be reunited with his former Houston Rockets executive in Daryl Morey. James Harden's last game with the Nets was a four-point performance on 2 of 11 shooting, with no defense. He just gave up on the court. The Nets had two options. They could either keep James and risk losing him in free agency for nothing, or they could trade him to Philly and receive some assets back. They chose the latter. On February 10th, 2022, the first member of the Nets Big Three was traded. James Harden was sent to Philly. Remember, Brooklyn gave up a haul of first round picks and key players for the beard in 2021. So what was their return here? Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Andre Drummond, and two first round picks. Two role players and a theoretical star player who hadn't played the entire season in Ben Simmons. The big three had officially been split up, only 13 months after formation. They played just 16 games together, going 13 and 3. Harden leaving in the fashion he did surprised people and left most Nets fans loathing him. The 2022 All-Star Draft that took place on the day this trade went down revealed KD's true emotions. He commented on the trade, claiming both teams got what they wanted. He then refused to pick Harden for his All-Star team. The focus quickly shifted from Kyrie, KD, and Harden to Kyrie, KD, and Ben Simmons. Simmons was the new kid on the block. Just eight months prior, Ben had one of the worst performing playoff series by any All-Star in NBA history. His free throw percentage was ridiculously bad, and his confidence seemed crushed. On top of this, he demanded a trade from Philly and refused to play any games for the Sixers until he was shipped out. The Nets were willing to take on this risk though. Before that series, Simmons was a multiple-time All-Star and a Defensive Player of the Year candidate. Sure, he had his shooting woes, but the Nets felt that this weakness would be hidden with Kyrie and KD along his side. Only one problem, Simmons was diagnosed with a herniated disc just one month after being traded to the team. It was a season-ending back injury. The number one player in the Harden trade package wouldn't even be suiting up for the team in the 2021-22 season. Shortly after this deal, NYC removed their vaccine mandate, allowing Kyrie to play all the games he wanted to. With both healthy and on the floor, the 7-11 duo had their fun moments. They crushed the James Harden-led Sixers and destroyed the number one seed in Miami Heat in the regular season. In the play-in, they beat the young and upcoming Cavs to snatch the seven seed. However, disappointment soon followed this excitement, a common theme throughout the 7-11 era. The Nets got swept by the Boston Celtics in round one of the 2022 playoffs. Kevin Durant struggled mightily in this series, shooting just 38% from the field. Ben Simmons never even touched the floor, despite there being multiple rumors and reports claiming that he was planning on returning against Boston. He ended up needing back surgery after the season concluded. Just 10 months prior, the Nets had crushed the Celtics in humiliating fashion with their mighty big three. Now, they were the ones being embarrassed, ending their season in sweeping fashion on their home floor with an L in Game 4. The Kyrie KD era didn't officially end here, but it was clear that the two stars wanted out. The Nets refused to give Kyrie Irving a max contract extension, which made him heavily consider a sign-in trade. He ended up giving in and opting into his player option, committing to the Nets for at least one more season. Kevin Durant, on the other hand, wasn't so thrilled. Damn! 
he requested a trade just two days after Irving opted in. Durant wanted both the Nets coach and Steve Nash, and the executive and Sean Marks to be fired. He told Nets owner Joe Tsai that it was either me or them. The Nets stood their ground though, and refused to trade him. They had just given Durant an extension one summer ago. They weren't going to let him go so soon. Brooklyn didn't oblige to any of KD's demands, electing to keep Nash and Marks. Durant reluctantly understood and rescinded this trade request, marking for a rare occasion where a star who requested a trade changed their mind. The Nets made some intriguing trades, acquiring Royce O'Neal, TJ Warren, and Yuta Watanabe, which strengthened their depth. Some fans believe that these moves along with the addition of a healthy Ben Simmons would ascend the Nets into a championship contender. Others thought Kyrie and KD were a ticking time bomb. They had both essentially requested a trade, only to change their minds later. It wouldn't be easy to just sweep that all under the rug and move on like it was nothing. Once the 2022-23 season tipped off and the Nets opened up 1-5, fans called for Steve Nash's head. They got their wish. Nash was canned on November 1st. Brooklyn firing Nash this early into the season begs the question, why didn't they just get rid of him when KD asked them to? That can be chalked up as another questionable move by the Nets management. Brooklyn thought about replacing Nash with suspended Celtics coach Ime Udoka, but decided against it, promoting assistant coach Jacques Vaughn instead. While all this was going on, Kyrie Irving had created quite the social media controversy. On October 27th, 2022, he tweeted a link to a film on Amazon that featured a boatload of hateful anti-Semitic filled content. When asked if he had any anti-Semitic beliefs, Irving refused to give a yes or no answer. I think what people want to hear though is just a yes or no on that question. Yes or no. I, I cannot be anti-Semitic if I know where I come from. He ended up being suspended by the Nets for what amounted to eight games. The Nets gave Irving a list of requirements he needed to complete before returning. Irving ended up doing what was asked of him, and was cleared to return to the team after 16 days. Irving apologized twice for this incident, once when he returned to the team on November 20th, and the other on an Instagram post on November 4th. Interestingly enough, Irving deleted this post a few months later, and you can make of that what you will. For most Nets fans, this was the final straw with Kyrie. His wildly inconsistent behavior no longer excused his great play on the court, and it had become a detriment to the team's success. But surprisingly enough, in the midst of this turmoil, the Nets went on a 12-game winning streak from December 7th to January 2nd. Unfortunately, this fun came to an end when Kevin Durant suffered yet another unlucky MCL injury in a January 8th game against the Miami Heat. For the second straight year, an untimely Kevin Durant knee injury had taken all of the Nets' momentum and crushed it. Kyrie and Ben Simmons couldn't keep the team afloat, and the Nets started dropping games quickly. Speaking of Simmons, his game had taken a complete nosedive upon arriving in Brooklyn. He had deteriorated from a star in Philly to an invisible role player in Brooklyn. His confidence was destroyed. It's almost as if he was afraid to shoot the ball when near the basket. Simmons was the main piece in the infamous Sixers James Harden trade, and he was a complete failure. While Harden was playing well in Philly, Simmons was getting booed by Nets fans. On February 3rd, 2023, while the Nets stood at the fourth seed in the East, it was made public that Kyrie Irving had shockingly requested a trade. Brooklyn didn't want to give him a max contract, so Irving wanted out. It had become quite clear that the relationship between Irving and the Nets' management had become too big of a rift to fix. Kyrie got his wish two days later, being shipped to the Dallas Mavericks for some role players and a first-round pick. Kevin Durant saw this occur, and realized that he too had had enough, quietly requesting a trade to the Suns a few days later. The Nets, with a heavy heart, granted him his wish, sending him to Phoenix for a heap of picks and young players. In just a few days, the 7-11 duo had unraveled. The Nets, for as toxic as they were, still held the fourth spot in the East, and were the second seed before KD got hurt. The two stars requesting trades as abruptly as they did left Nets fans with a bad taste in their mouth. 
why not play the season out and see what happens? But in reality, this was a more than fitting end to the Kyrie KD era. It's yet another what if to add to the overflowing collection. This team was embodied by what ifs for the better part of three years. It's easy to sit there and pin all of the failures of this team on one person. In reality though, Brooklyn's downfall was a combination of many factors. Had Kyrie or Harden not gotten injured in the 2021 playoffs, it was likely that the Nets would have won the championship. Had Kyrie gotten the shot, it's possible that James Harden wouldn't have grown frustrated with the team and won it out. What if the Nets organization allowed Kyrie to play road games from the season's beginning? Would that have changed anything? Had Spencer Dinwiddie not gotten hurt back in December of 2020, the James Harden trade may have never happened to begin with. Maybe if Brooklyn put their foot down when Kyrie and KD wanted Kenny Atkinson fired, it would have shown the two stars that the Nets weren't going to allow themselves to be pushed around. Was there a severe lack of leadership and accountability in the locker room? These are all questions that will be analyzed over and over again for years to come. Or maybe that's all wrong, and the Nets' failure can actually be blamed on Kyrie stepping on Lucky the Leprechaun. What needs to be recognized is that in the NBA, winning a championship takes a bit of luck on top of everything else. And at the end of the day, the Nets were just plain old unlucky. We just didn't get on the court enough. I think when you seen James, Kyrie, and myself, it was, it was amazing basketball for 17 games, though. Now, fast forward to date, I don't look like the crazy one. I just know I want to be places where I'm celebrated. Uh, and not just tolerated or, or you know, kind of dealt with in a way that doesn't make me feel respected. 